Hey guys, I'm Allison. I'm the Pampered Wife. I was going to do an empties video today, but I have so many makeup products that I'm just loving right now that I, whoop, I banged the table. See, I talked a lot with my hands. <laughs> um, there's so many products that I'm loving right now, makeup products. Some are new, actually, uh, newer releases. But anyway, I feel like before I can do my empties, I've got to share these with you. So we're just going to kind of be going through some stuff that I'm loving right now. I think that's what this video is. As is often the case, my dog is right down here, so he keeps bumping into me. We call it nudging uh, with his nose, and he's doing some snorting and breathing. So if you hear those kinds of noises, that's what it is. He also does a little bit of that. I'm not sure what to call that. Lip smacking, but it's his tongue. All right, so I don't even know where to begin. First off, oh, I meant to bring that in here. Okay, I think I have it. I mean, I have the things I was gonna talk about, but I have things to compare them to. What was the other one? Well, we'll just go with this. Okay, so the first thing that I am absolutely loving lately is one of the things that I got from Integrity Botanicals. They gifted me, like they gave me a gift card, and one of the things I selected was this 14E Aloe Nourishing Foundation. It is SPF 23. So I picked this because 14E, I don't know why I didn't choose their setting powder, but they're like world famous in the clean beauty space for their setting powder. It is supposed to be the number one best setting powder ever. Why I didn't try that? Well, I know why I didn't try it. I have a bunch of setting powders. I'm gonna talk about two in this video actually. Um, so anyway, I wanted to try something from them. They're a great brand and I never had, so I decided to get their foundation. They have, like a tint as well with SPF, I believe. This is actually the foundation. I have the shade Bamboo, which is 03. It's all natural, it's aloe base, that's the first ingredient, and it smells like lavender. And the scent dissipates, but it definitely does smell like lavender. Let me just put that out there. The reason I'm loving this is because it is a semi-matte formula. So I'm gonna put, I'm wearing it today, but I'm gonna put a little bit here on the back of my hand. It comes in this squeezy tube. It is one ounce, even though I feel like it looks smaller than one ounce. This is what it looks like. And there's my shade. So this is also one ounce. It's the Tower 28 Sunny Days. And so this is the 14E. They have the same amount of product, even though to me the 14E looks smaller. That's just marketing, packaging, anyway. I'm gonna put this one right here and show you. It is a foundation, it is medium coverage, and it does dry down to a semi-matte finish. Whereas the Tower 28, which I don't know if I have to shake this. I definitely don't need to shake the 14E. The Tower 28 has a more skin-like finish, and I use that term loosely because skin looks different, but it's not dewy or luminous, it just has a really pretty skin-like finish. And it's also a lot thinner and feels maybe like it has more slit, more emollient. I don't know if it has silicone in it. I know that the 14E does not have silicone and even with glasses on, I cannot read this. Wow, we've reached a new point. So here's the Tower 28 and here's the 14E. Now they're both not, <clears throat> excuse me, all the way set down yet. You can already see a huge difference in the finish. And the last one I'm gonna show you is the Iris and Romeo Sunny Days. This is another SPF foundation. I have the shade five, this is SPF 25. I'm jumping back and forth, but the Tower 28 is SPF 30. This is the highest, but we all know by now we're not relying on these foundations for our sunscreen. I do wear sunscreen underneath. But this is really nice. I do love this formula too. Let me show you, I'll put that right next to the Tower 28. Tower 28 is taking forever to dry down. So here is the Iris and Romeo, which I think has a beautiful finish as well. Then the Tower 28, and then finally the 14E. Hopefully you can see all those. Back to one of the reasons I'm loving it. First, it's a foundation, it's not a tint. Like it definitely is a foundation, it definitely has medium coverage. Also, it has the SPF, so I like that I'm getting additional SPF on my face. But on top of that, the finish is satin matte. So depending on what I wear under it, because I wear sunscreen under it every day, if I wear a matte or more matte sunscreen, 
this is quite matte. Not that dead matte, not completely matte. It's definitely satin matte, but it's definitely matte, more matte. If I wear a dewier sunscreen underneath, like today I have on the Say sunscreen. I'll put a picture of it so you know which one I'm talking about. It's an untinted sunscreen that is quite luminous and my face is quite luminous. Also what I love about it is it does dry down. I don't have to powder it. It wears beautifully. It just checks all the boxes and it's nice to put on. It smells nice with the lavender, but the scent does go away so it hasn't caused my allergies to act up. Usually I rotate out my weekly makeup every week. I'll use stuff for a week and move on. But this one, well, all of this makeup that I'm gonna talk about, I've wanted to use continuously, but I just grabbed it. I was like, why shouldn't I use what I like? So here are the foundations while I was talking. The Tower 28 is in the middle and this is on the end over here, the 14E, and over here, the Iris and Romeo Sunny Days. The Tower 28 still has not dried down. The Iris and Romeo has as much as it's going to. I'm trying to think of what to talk about next. Okay, so this is, is a favorite, but that's not really why I'm talking about it. I just found this interesting. The Fit Glow Foundation, I have the shade C3, Finally, my camera, I think, is focusing properly. Yes. So this is the Fit Glow Foundation. Here's the Doe Foot applicator. And let me swatch C3 for you. Put that right there. It is what I'm wearing today. It's supposed to be full coverage, and I don't know what happens on my skin that I don't feel like any foundation is full coverage. It's definitely a thicker, not foundation, any concealer is full coverage. It's definitely thicker, and when you put it on, it almost feels not hard but it doesn't feel super creamy or thin or emollient so when you put it on it stays right there and what i find the best way to put it on is or spread it out is with this brush it's just a sephora number 57 and i like to tap the concealer in because if i use my fingers I can, you know, tap it and lift up the product and it creates texture. I realized finally that it's not necessarily the product because I noticed this with a lot of concealers. It's just me. <laughs> so application does make a difference. And I'm telling you this about this product because it was an aha moment for me. I didn't think this product created texture and then this morning I put it on and it did and I realized it's never done that before and I always use a brush. I wonder if my other concealers that end up creating texture through here are really fine and I need to apply them differently. So I'll play around with that. But here it is, once I've tapped it out, it's got really nice coverage. It's not matte on my under eyes. I mean, it's, again, probably a skin-like finish. Um, it's definitely shinier than my hand, if that makes sense. Like I don't have it over here and I do have it over here and it's more luminous. So when I put it on under my eyes, I definitely have to powder. It's not so much the how it feels, like it does dry down nicely, but I definitely have to powder it because otherwise these bags right here are just totally accentuated. And I mean, even now they're pretty significant. This is just part of aging. Your eye sockets sink, you lose bone around your eyes. I mean, what's not to love? And anyway, that was just something I wanted to share. And this is a great foundation. I did get it to cover up this mess of a thing. Again, I feel like if it were full coverage, it would totally camouflage it, but it didn't. So I don't know why. I wanted to talk about that with you guys. Okay, something else I'm loving is the Fit Glow Instantly Bur Blurring Bamboo Hyaluronic Loose Setting Powder. This is a newer release. It is a locking sifting system. I'm gonna open it, but I, whoop, see a bunch fill out. I'm gonna keep it this way. I don't know why so much keeps falling out into the top. There's always a ton in there and I keep it locked. I don't know if it's coming out the sides into the top or what's going on. If just the first time I used it, a whole bunch came out and I'm still working through it. I mean, that's possible, I guess. It is super, super fine. And I do know that the first time I used it, I opened the lock and it's got, you know, holes for some of the products to come through. It is so finely ground or milled. It's just like dust and a whole bunch of it came out 
into the top. This stuff, I have it on under my eyes. I have it actually all through here and here and here. It blurs and really takes away the shine without making your skin look dead. I think I should put a little right here. Yeah. Okay, I don't have a mirror, so I gotta look in the monitor thing. All right. See that? Compared to that? I'm not, I, I think the first couple times I used it, maybe I used too much and I did get some white ghosting or whatever you'd say, but it did look a little pale on my skin. I'm not getting that now. I'm using less product. You don't need hardly any. And look how nice that looks. I mean, this is a pretty decent fold at this point. And it just, it blurs. It takes the shine away. It's comfortable. It's not drying. It doesn't look drying. It doesn't feel drying. But it does take away any tackiness or stickiness. Yeah. It's really great. I'm loving it. It's all I've been using under my eyes. It's all I want to reach for. I've used this for a couple weeks now. Like I said, it's definitely become a favorite. Whoop, see a whole bunch. I don't know if you saw that. A whole bunch of it is just flying out. So I don't know that I can criticize the packaging. I have a feeling that was more user error. Yeah, I don't really have any criticisms. It's fantastic. I am, however, still loving my Say Air Set Loose Setting Powder in the shade Translucent. For funsies, even though I didn't really need it, I did put it all over, including right here. So you see, it definitely does not take down any, well, I do have highlighter on, but well, you saw right here where I had placed it. It doesn't take down any, hardly any shine. It still leaves your skin looking luminous. I think it even has some particles in here to make it look a little luminous. It also does some airbrushing, not as much as the Fit Glow. The Fit Glow, the airbrushing is amazing. I'm hoping they come out with some more shades just because I do like a tinted version of a powder, but I'm still absolutely loving the Say to put in places on my face where if I'm using a different foundation or maybe some products that do stay tacky or you know don't dry down all the way, that I can use this and have it not take away any of my luminosity or dewiness, it still just looks so pretty, I think. And like I said, I do have the shade Translucent. I'm gonna take my finger and see if I can show you on my skin. I mean, obviously that's really built up. And I could put it right here. It just blends right in. I mean, you, you can't see it. Maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it. But it definitely blends nicely with my skin color so I'm still loving this I just don't like to use it under my eyes because it does still have some of the luminosity to it and right in here these troughs need something mattifying I just looked at the time I cannot believe how long I've been talking about this stuff I'm not gonna like speed review but I do sort of want to get through this you can guess what I'm wearing on my eyelashes it is the tower 28 mascara make waves it really is great. Um, I haven't tried building it up more than one or two coats because I just don't feel the need to. I mean, look at this. It's been on an hour, maybe two hours at this point. It doesn't flake or smudge. I feel like my oil cleanser doesn't get it off, so d really do a great job getting it off. And I do go in with a second cleanse every night, and by the time I'm done with my second cleanse, it comes off so... I don't know if that means if you have oily skin, oily eyelids, this might wear well for you. I guess let us know in the comments if that's the case, if you have oily lids and you try this or have tried it. All I can tell you is the hype is real. It's really fantastic. I mean, has it changed my life? I wouldn't say it's changed my life, but it has made me happy. All right, on my lips, all I have is the Tower 28 Multi Liner. I have the shade Work of Art. And it's really like, just, I think it's a taupe, is what I would call it. Let me draw it on there. You tell me what you think. It, it looks more of a pinkish brown here, but on my lips, I feel like it looks more taupe. Maybe it's mixing with the pink of my lips. I do have this um, on my cheeks. It's not the best on my cheeks. I like to rub it into my finger and then kind of dot and spread around. All I did was line my lips with this. I didn't even have any 
kind of moisture on my lips. I just lined my lips and then colored in some and went like that and the color was there. It was almost that dead brown, like a vampy brown on me. I just, I love it. I'm loving it, especially with this look. And I did go on top with some lip gloss, any clear lip gloss. I happen to keep reaching for the Minori lip gloss. It's just a great hydrating non, well, actually it is a little sticky. But I really like it, it's comfortable to me. Um, anyway, that's what I have on my lips, I absolutely love it. I actually thought, looking at my lips, that maybe it was similar to if I put a contour shade on my lips. It's not, it's much warmer. But that's the feeling I got when I first put it on. So it's just a great shade with lots of different colors, but that just happens to be what I'm wearing today, and I do love it. And even before I put on the lip gloss, it was comfortable. Like, I couldn't believe how creamy it was. I am loving this eye look. Love, love, loving it. So I'm loving what is on my eyes, just the shade of it. I've been totally into this. So another thing that I got picked out from Botana, Integrity Botanica, mm, Integrity Botanicals. See, I can say that. I picked out, well, this Z palette, which is just a magnetic thing to hold your loose eyeshadows, but I actually took some eyeshadows out of other palettes. Um, these are my Fit Glow that I took out of the Fit Glow palette. Anyway, this is a Sappho eyeshadow that I picked. Gosh, I hope the name is on here. I believe it's Chloe. I am loving it, okay? It's more nuanced than it looks. It looks like a taupey brown, but then in different lighting, it's a grayish purple, and it is a drier powder. Let me just put that out there. If you have oily lids, you may love this. It is definitely not buttery or creamy. I don't know that you'd love it if you have oily lids, but I'm just saying it's, it's a dry powder. It is so pretty. So here it is right here on my finger. And you can see how it's sort of brown, but sort of purple, but sort of gray. Hopefully you can see some of the nuance. And then the other one that I feel like Chloe is just the matte powder version of this, which is still a sample that I'm working off of from Ritual Defeat. This is, I can't even believe I'm having to look at the name when I've loved this for so long. Cultist. This is so gorgeous. It's just the shimmery version of that. But I'm gonna go ahead on another finger and put that on. And that's on this finger. So see, they're almost twinsies. One is the matte version and one is the shimmery version. And so I'm just gonna swipe this on my hand. And there they are side by side. Aren't they so pretty? I just, I love them. And this is what I've been wearing. I've been reaching for one or both. Some days I do the Sappho eyeshadow all over my eyes and it can sheer out or you can build it up. And same with the Ritual Defeat. Uh, typically if I wear the Sappho, then I go in with a highlighter and dot a little bit. And it gives, since I use such emollient highlighters, which we'll talk about in a second, it almost as the day goes on like makes my whole eye look like that greasy, shiny, wet look that I absolutely love. Anyway, I'm loving these two eyeshadows, loving them. I can't get enough of the colors and the complexity of the colors and just, I'm just loving them. I feel like now that we're into fall, it's time to head into cooler colors, but these have enough depth that they're like warm and cool. I don't know. All right, I'll do brows real quick. I'm loving the Cloven Hallow Brow Gel. This is called Boost a Brow, and I have a shade. Is it chestnut? Is this the one that's chestnut? I'm sorry, I absolutely can't see it. I'll figure it out and put it on the screen. Anyway, I'm wearing it today. Finally, a product that adds tint without getting so messy and gloopy and just making such a mess of my brows and it holds them in place. I love this. Now I will admit sometimes I go in with a spoolie afterwards and just shape a little bit 
I really like a one and done product. I really, I say this every time, gotta go back and try the Beauty Counter Brow Gel and see what I think of that, because I used to love it. But this is a shorter little brush, so cute, lots of space between the bristles. It doesn't have a ton of product. It's not like I've pulled out a wet paintbrush, which I feel like so many of my brow products are right now. This is a favorite. And then finally, I've only been reaching for two highlighters. And when I look at my highlighters, I can't exactly decide why that is because I love a lot of them. I guess it's just where I am right now. I've just wanted to use a balm. I've wanted something super easy. Not that any of them are difficult, but I've just been reaching for these two. Well, really just this one, <laughs> but I have two here. So this is the Victoria Be Beckham highlighter. It's got this slim, packaging with the gold, ribbed gold and the VB here on the end. Do you see it? There you go. This is the shade Pearl. I think it only comes in one shade. It's, you know, like lipstick. I'm gonna put it right here. I actually have that on this side of the face. It's really pretty. It didn't do great on top of the powder. Like I can see kind of exactly where it starts. See that? Like it, there's sort of a hard start. I think you can see that. What I do is I just rub my finger along it and dab it on. So that's something to take note of because I've been really trying to differentiate it from the Westman Atelier with its beautiful heavy packaging. A lot bigger and bulkier. I have the shade Nectar. So obviously the shade is different. Did I show you this one? So you can see them side by side. Whereas this one is definitely a peachy pink. And I will put it right here next to the Victoria Beckham or the, yeah, Victoria Beckham Beauty. So the difference I've found is this one is definitely more balmy, although they are both balms. And this one just feels a little balmier, like wetter maybe, the Westman Atelier for a bit anyway. They both do eventually dry down. I almost feel like the Westman Atelier one maybe looks a little more wet, whereas the Victoria Beckham maybe looks a little more lit up. Don't know if that makes sense, but they both wear about the same amount of time. They both wear beautifully. The Westman Atelier, I think, does play better with powders. Like, I had no problem putting this one on. It's this side. They both wear about the same. They have the teeniest, tiniest little shimmer particles in them. When they wear off, you can see dusting of the shimmers. But otherwise, I think they're pretty much almost dupes for each other. Although you can see what I mean. The Victoria Beckham is definitely getting more light than the Westman Atelier. That's my take on them. I've been wanting to compare the two of them for a while. I've been applying them differently, wearing them on each arm to see which lasts longer, all this stuff. And I finally came down to, they're pretty much dupes for each other. The Westman Atelier looks a little more wet. The Victoria Beckham looks a little more lit up. And they both are balmy. The Westman Atelier is a bit more balmy. Um, they're both comfortable, they both dry down, and there's obviously a shade difference, although the Westman Atelier does come in multiple shades. That's it, I think I've gone through all my favorites. I can now look forward to filming an empties video later because I just had to talk about this. I mean, let me know what you think of this face of makeup. Like, I love it. It's, I just think it's so pretty, and it's wonderful heading into fall. I totally can and do change the lip up, especially a berry looks really pretty with these eyeshadow colors and I kept the cheek neutral. Let me know if you've tried any of the stuff that I'm talking about, have talked about, if you will try or curious about any of it. I'd love to hear from you as always. If you enjoyed this video at any point, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to have you subscribe. And as always, I hope you find some time to pamper yourself today.